Oh, is that something new? It'd be a shame if someone learned it. Hi, I'm acting's Tom Weaver. You might recognize me from the theater. But today I'm not here to play a role or do a sword fight. Today I'm here to teach you how to make the Middle Eastern dish mujadra. Now you might be thinking, what does this guy know about the Middle Eastern dish mujadra? I mean, he's not Middle Eastern, he's white. Yeah, he is. In fact, I spit into a tube and mailed it to a company and gave them money to tell me that much. So what you're gonna, yeah. So what you're going to see today is not necessarily an authentic recipe. In fact, I'm pretty sure in some ways it's been Americanized. And if you're looking for the authentic thing, I highly suggest checking out Second Street Shawarma here in Harrisburg. They make a mean mujadra. Now, here's what I do know. Ooh, that doesn't taste good. That reminds me of dirty water, like like the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland. I used to live in this city in the early 2000s and it was not great. Don't let this picture fool you. I mean, it looks nice in that picture, but like, it's really not that great. And I, I don't want to get too down on Cleveland. I had a great job there working for Great Lakes Theater Festival, teaching Shakespeare and acting. And I also worked at a restaurant called Aladdin's Natural Eatery in Cleveland Heights. And this is when I first encountered the dish of mujagra. And I honestly, I ate this every single day. And what's not to love? It's lentils, it's rice, it's Middle Eastern spices, it's fried onions, it's delicious. And I learned how to make this dish. Oh, okay, so that guy in that picture there, his name was Wadea, and he was one of the chefs at Aladdin's. Now, he wasn't the one who showed me how to make it. Who showed me how to make this dish was a chef named Gilal. And in fact, there's a picture of us right there learning how to make the dish Mujadra. That's actual footage of me and Gilal. But really, Galal is the one who showed me what little I do know about this dish, and the rest I've kind of picked up on recipes from the internet. So I'm going to share all of that with you today. So first things first, you want to find a kitchen. So I'm going to use my kitchen here, and you'll see that I have a stove. It's on its last leg, but we'll probably get a few more rides out of it. And also have the refrigerator with some magnets and very long arms. Uh, also, I just want to point out, I have a green butter dish in the shape of Buddha. Do you? Okay, one more thing. You're going to need, wait for it, an apron. And I got this apron at the HBG Flea. My wife is the co-founder and owner. Really great place. So uh, actually this apron is more of a work apron. Uh, I use it in the kitchen. It sort of makes me feel like a server at a farm-to-table restaurant. Oh, hi. hi. My name is Brockton. Welcome to the farm to table Anybody been here before? No? Anybody been here? No? Yes, yes. Blank stairs? Okay. So, everything's farm-to-table, grass-fed, locally sourced, um, green cups that you put the water in from the old mason jars. Uh, so, so, Chef today has a hanger steak. It is absolutely awesome. Right? And then some uh, fingerling potatoes and so, so anybody uh, want to uh, take a look at the menu and then take some time? Okay, okay, okay. So you guys take your time. We'll be right back. My name is Brockton, and we're going to Millworks. Okay, I'm going to hang him. And scene. Nailed it. Okay, that was fun, but all kidding aside, I'm going to take a moment to show you all the different instruments you're going to need in order to make this dish today. So first things first, ideally, you're going to want to use a cast iron skillet. Uh, I'm not going to be using a cast iron skillet because mine doesn't have a lid, oh no. So unfortunately, we won't be able to use the cast iron skillet, but uh, I do have this pan here. 
with stained enamel. It's clean, but it, it, it doesn't look great, but it's going to work, and it's going to work because it has a lid, and that's the most important thing. Everything's going to happen in this lid. If you don't like that, and if you don't like the way my pan looks, then just stop watching, okay? It's like the middle of the day. What are you doing on Facebook? Okay. So that's your pan. You're also going to want to use a saucepan, okay? Look at that one. It's clean, okay? Are we cool? So this is what you're going to make your lentils in. You're going to use this to prep them, to get them nice and tender. And you don't need a lid for the lentils. Just sort of let them boil lidless. Let them be free. Next thing you're going to need is... A colander. So you're going to use this to rinse your lentils. You're going to use this to rinse your rice as well. What I love about this, oh, it's so cool. I love that. It just like saves all kinds of space in your cabinets and stuff. Um, so that's a that's a fun little thing right there. Next thing we're going to need is um, this wooden thing here. So this is going to uh, stir the stuff around and help you to make mujatara, I guess. Uh, next thing you're going to need is a knife. Uh, a sharp one. You're going to use it to cut things. Preferably, uh, not preferably, but specifically onions. You're going to cut onions with this knife. This is a French chef's knife, but use whatever you have in your kitchen. And finally, another thing you're going to need is a way to pass some time, because this dish does take some time. You're going to want to find some ways to occupy some of that downtime while things are boiling and simmering. And you could watch a movie, you could go on Netflix, or you could read something, and I highly suggest Black Mermaids by Julia Mallory. Uh, she is a local poet and fantastic. I've been reading this uh, for the last couple of weeks and it's been wonderful, so I cannot recommend it enough. Go to the website, Black Mermaids, and you can order a copy there. So that's everything you're gonna need. I think we're ready to start. What, what, what was that? Okay, so here's my cutting board, courtesy of the HBG Flea, and here are the ingredients you're going to need. Hopefully these are things that you can find around your house. So first things first, one cup of brown or green lentils. You're going to rinse these and um, pick through them for any debris. Ideally, this is a pack of lentils that Andrew Nyberg left in your dresser drawer when he came to stay with you last. So next thing is three quarters cup of rice. I promise you there is rice in that bowl. It's kind of hard to see. So today we're going to be using jasmine rice because it's what I have, but you can use brown rice or basmati, whatever you have, just not instant rice. So yeah, rice. Next things next, you're going to need a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. This is what you're going to fry your onions in. I know it seems like a lot, but you're going to need it to get the onions to be the proper texture. And speaking of, we need three medium onions. Now, use whatever onions speak to you. For me, that's three yellow onions that I found at Radish and Rye, but you could use like red onions or Vidalia, Vidalia, Vidalia. Also, you're going to need three cups of water, the source of life. One teaspoon of cumin seeds. Now, I know that not everybody may have this in their pantry, so if you have ground cumin, that's totally fine. This is going to help to flavor the onions. You're also going to want to use half a teaspoon of cracked peppercorns. Um, these are whole peppercorns, in case you can't see, and I'm just going to use uh, the edge of my knife just to break these down later on. You're also going to need, wait for it, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and half a teaspoon of ground cumin. Look at the way I put both of those things in that tiny little dish. Isn't it cute? All right. Next thing we need, one cinnamon stick. Now, the last time I made this, the cinnamon was a little overpowering, so I'm just going to cut this cinnamon stick in half to about a one-inch piece. I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to try to cut it, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to, what, I'm going to, Okay, I'm eventually going to cut this cinnamon stick, um, it, but we don't need to watch me deal with that ordeal. Uh, next thing, you're going to need the juice of one lemon. This is going to be a great way to finish off the dish. There's a lot of spices going on. The acidity is going to help balance all of that out. And now you just want to prep your onions. So you're just going to slice them up. Uh, you don't want to dice them. You want to cut them into uh, strips. And, you know, just take your time with it. Cut right through the root. You don't want to separate the root from the onion because that's going to cause the onion to bleed and that's going to make you cry. So 
yeah, enjoy cutting the onions. Uh, make room for your wife if she needs to get a glass of water. Uh, and next thing, you want to prep your lentils. So you've rinsed them, you've picked through any debris, small stones, band-aids that might have been in there, and you're going to cover your lentils with one inch of cold water and pop those lentils on the stove over heat and you're going to bring them to a rolling boil and uh, you want to make sure that they get tender. You don't want them to be too soggy. So I would say about 15 to 20 minutes uncovered. Just keep your eye on it. Test them every now and then. Again, you don't want them to get too soggy. Okay, so now you want to start to cook your onions. And all right, Full disclosure, I've never made a cooking video before, and I totally forgot to record the beginning part of cooking the onions. So deal with it. So what I'm going to do is, when I was done, I went back and I just made a small batch of the onions so that you could see how we want to start everything off. And we're going to take a look at that now. So pan over medium to high heat, put in your olive oil, and get that nice and warm I guess or whatever and throw in your cumin seeds throw in your cracked pepper and let that go around there for maybe about a minute and let those flavors really infuse into the oil before you add your onions and when you add your onions you're going to add some salt and really start to move these guys around the pan making sure that they are completely covered and just sort of work your magic and eventually your pan is going to get bigger and full of more onions like this so let's take a minute to talk about these onions. The onions are, in my opinion, the really important part of this dish. It's, they're almost like the star, even though it's an ensemble piece. So if Mujadra is like the five bloods, the onions are the Delroy Lindo of this dish. It's not gonna be the same without them. So it's gonna take some time, about 20 to 30 minutes, uh, simmering in that olive oil. Make sure that you move it around a bit. Uh, we want these onions to get a little bit crispy on the ends. So we're not looking for a translucent, caramelized onion. We really want them to start to brown a little bit and get crispy. So this will take some time. Like I said, about 20 to 30 minutes. Move them around the pan. Once they start to get that way, you can remove them from the pan using some tongs. Uh, put them on a paper towel. They're going to serve as garnish for later. And you're going to see me do that here uh, at, at some point point this is sped up but while we're waiting on the onions to finish oh see okay so here we go yeah we're just gonna start to pull them out yeah and you see they started to brown a little bit and get a little burnt they're perfect that's great so at this point we're gonna add our cumin and our cinnamon stick and our cayenne pepper look at that beautiful brick color oh it's gonna be so good throw in your rice and brown that rice for about a minute. You don't want to break it up, but you just want to brown it. Um, and as soon as that's moved around the pan there for a bit, you're going to add your lentils and add your water, the source of life. Add some salt and bring it to a boil. And once it boils, bring it down to a simmer and cover it up for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now, while we're waiting, let's talk about Gamut Theater Group. So I've been involved with Gamut Theater Group for several years. Um, it is like a home to me, an artistic home. I really, really love working for and with this company and uh, so many wonderful things that they provide for the community, uh, not just in terms of thoughtful and engaging performances, but also uh, really wonderful education programs. So we have a beautiful, strong community here in Harrisburg, and I really believe that Gamut Theatre Group is one of the reasons for that. So if you can find some time to give to Gamut in a meaningful way, whatever is meaningful to you, that's awesome. Check out their website, gamuttheatre.org, and find out all the different ways that you can support Gamut during the time of COVID-19. Okay, so we're ready to put this together. So we have our lemon that we're going to squeeze over our mujadra. And we're just going to plate this up in a bowl. So, you know, just take a, a spoon or whatever and, and, and put that. So, at full disclosure here, I think that I cooked the lentils a little too much. And and and, and the rice, I don't know that I... I um, God, listen to me. I can't even... I, I can't let something be good. So, the rice is a little overdone, too. It's kind of clumping together. But this is still going to be really good. You can't smell it from where you are, but it smells really good. Um, so we have our onions over here. We're just going to top the dish off with some 
fried onions that we reserved from earlier. And yeah, this is going to be awesome. So if you want to, you can top it with something green, uh, like a Lebanese salata or a fatouche uh, or green beans or tabbouleh, but uh, I'm just going to eat it plain. So now it's time to see how we did. I feel pretty good about this. I think it's going to taste all right. Uh, in fact, I think it's going to taste great. I mean, it looks great. Check that out. So when you get your bite going, make sure you get some of those onions on there. Oh, by the way, fish that cinnamon stick out. You don't want to bite into a cinnamon stick. And not bad. This is pretty good. Uh, I will say I was right. I did cook the lentils a little too long and the rice wasn't rinsed enough, but it's still good. It doesn't taste exact. There goes Otis. It doesn't taste exactly like I remember in Cleveland, but this is pretty awesome for what I just had lying around the kitchen. And I hope that you try to make it too, because it's a pretty relaxing dish to make. And there you have it. That's Mujadra. And that's Otis, behind me, just hanging out. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. Uh, please try this recipe yourself. Let me know how it goes for you. Let me know if there's anything that I can do differently. And remember, Science is real, wear a mask, and black lives matter. Till next time. <laughs>